you're thinking. You're thinking, Craig, what's that strange-looking papery iPod you have in your hand? <laughs> it's a book. It's a book written by my uh, next guest, who's a scholar and an author, and this is his latest book. It's called Brother West, Living and Loving Out Loud. It's in paperback now, which would imply to me that it was probably in hardback before. <laughs> He may have met his match. <laughs> Dr. Cornell West, everybody. Dr. Dear brother, 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 Ferguson, how are you? You doing? know I'm all right, Doctor. I'm how are you? Glad to be here today, my brother. I'm t I want to congratulate you on your triumph at Carnegie Hall. Oh, thanks very indeed, much. I, I, that was magnificent. Thank you very much. The word on the street. Oh, indeed, indeed. Yeah, I know. I, magnificent, brother. I was uh, very surprised to be in Carnegie Hall on the stage there and um, and not uh, being thrown out. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm very, I'm interested, before I talk to you about what's inside the book, which yes, I do yes. want to talk about, I'm a little concerned that the cover is not, it's not your best photograph. You... I, I, no, I think, I think, I think I really peaked with this photograph. No. I don't know. I peaked. That's me. I'm at my best. I'm at my best, my I brother. I don't know. I think it makes you look a little bit bitey. Like you're gonna... No, I think it makes me look delicious. Okay, fair enough. It does. You I look, look delicious. delicious. Absolutely. It's a memoir, you say. A I, memoir. Yeah, but I, I heard about your wonderful yeah, memoir I wrote, self. I wrote a memoir. American, yeah, it's good. What did you, on purpose. Yeah, did you, did you enjoy the process of writing a, a I memoir? I did, though. I did, because, you know, it's cathartic. It allows you to reflect on your life and recognize how blessed you really are. Right. Love with mom and my church and my, the struggle for freedom that produced me. I, I think to myself... I've been invited to the banquet of life for 57 years. I've had an abundance of blessings, and I am glad to be here. And if I have to go tonight, I go with a smile on my face. That's not, that's not bad. Yeah, that's no, not bad. That's the kind of life I've lived. That's, that's the kind of life I've lived. See, you're a much more spiritual and evolved creature than I, because when I was writing mine, I was thinking, oh, crap, I'm still only on page 78. That's what we... <laughs> No, 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 but you have a spirituality in your honesty, and that's what's so magnificent about mm. it. Absolutely. But it's part of the legacy of Scotland. You know, the finest philosophic mind in the English language was a Scotsman. You know that. Who David that? Hume. David Hume? David Hume. Oh, really? I don't know much about the work of David Hume. Oh, yes. He wrote really? a classic 24 years old. He had a breakdown, a treatise of human nature, but there's nothing like him in the history of modern philosophy straight from Scotland. Really? I should, I should read that. What should I read about David Hume? You would read probably the Dialogues on Natural Religions, the finest text ever written on uh, religious faith in terms of his really? skepticism. Now, I'm a Christian, so I think he's wrong, but right, I like right. the challenge. <laughs> I and love the challenge. I, I love the challenge. I do like that, Doctor. Absolutely. I do like oh, to hear to have a man critics. of theology say, I like an argument. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's good Very because much. do you think, you know, when people say they have faith, let's talk about faith because you were talking about being a Christian. When people have faith and they say, I am certain, I don't think that's faith. I think that's certainty. That's Surely right. faith contains an element of doubt. But there's a difference between rational certainty and blessed assurance. Well, what is the difference? Blessed assurance is making a leap of faith, stepping out on nothing and landing on something. Mm. That's different. That's the limits of intelligence. In fact, the sign of a highly intelligent person is to recognize the limits of intelligence. I don't even understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> However, the, 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 it's, it's something that fascinates me, though. It's something that fascinates me about, about people who are, are, are certain, or blessed assurance, as you call it. Because yes. blessed assurance would, for me, like, to make a leap of faith, one would have to have doubt before making the leap, right? Absolutely. Or else it's not a leap. And there's always an element of doubt, even in your faith, because it's not all about you. You are acknowledging something greater than you, like falling in love. Mm. When you fall in love, that's a leap of faith, brother. Yeah. That's yeah. A seriously. Well, yeah, you, yeah. you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Oh, yes. Sir. Oh, yeah. yes. Let's go. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Are, you, uh, are, you, uh, are you married? Not at the moment. I see. <laughs> Not at, I've had some right, magnificent yeah, marriages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. All right. All right. <laughs> are, you, 
Are you, uh, how, do, how do you do it then with, in the sense of, uh, how do you keep from despair or disheartenment? Anyone who I know who is, has great faith also has great despair, great moments of fear. Do you experience oh, that? Oh, absolutely. He who has never despaired has never lived. Right. How do you combat that? No, see, I'm a blues man in the life of the mind, which means that I make despair and catastrophe constant companions. They, they're, they're with me when I get, in the, get up every morning. But I just don't allow despair to have the last word. So how, they're always with me. How do, you, how do you disconnect? How do you stop despair or disillusionment or fear from dragging you under? Is there a tool, a, a, a spiritual tool or something you do, a, a trick to it? No, I think a lot of it has to do with ancestor appreciation. Okay. I think of mom. I think of dad, I think of my right. grandparents, right. Know, I think of friends, and I think of my children and grandson and so forth. So when you have that love coming at your back, and then when you have progeny that you're giving love, you say to yourself, even with the despair inside of me, like a blues man. Because remember mm -hmm. what B.B. King said, nobody loves me but my mom and she might be driving too. <laughs> That's, that, that's, that's the king of the blues. That's, that's very that's upsetting. That's yeah. catastrophic. Yeah. That's catastrophic. That is catastrophic. That's like yeah. Antigone, Sophocles' play. Hey, there you go. Everything's yes. against you, but the blues says what? I still got a smile on my face. I still playing my Lucille. Yeah, but, but blues, isn't, that, isn't that slightly delusional to do that? <laughs> no, not at all. Because as long as you are moving, as long as you're in motion, and that love and that compassion and that, 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 that the memory is pushing you on, you are still persevering, and that's the best we do. What do you think then, in the terms of persevering in the human spirit, do yeah. you care to speculate what happens after we shuffle off this mortal coil? What, what goes on well, there? Well, me as a Christian, I, I, I have faith, but I really, T.S. Eliot is one of the finest Christian poets, when he says, ours is in the trying, the rest is not my business. All right, so not knowing is okay. And I'm just going to love my way through the darkness, and the rest is not my business. Okay, that seems fair. Divine power kicks in, grace kicks in, you just don't know. This, it's quite interesting to hear you say this on a night when I have an audience that all they care about is money. Uh, <laughs> oh no, not this audience. Oh, yeah. Not this audience. Oh, oh yeah. no. Yeah, there you go. Oh, uh, I see, I see. No. But it's, not, but it's not money as an idol, it's just money as a means for something deeper. I think the quote is, the love of money is the root of all evil, not that money is the root of all That's evil. That's exactly the right. The love of money. So we're making a false right. idol out of money, perhaps. There's nothing wrong with loving money if you love justice and if you love God, if you love democracy, some greater cause than just the cash. Yeah. So the cash becomes an instrument, not an end. That's all. But I do like my cash, don't Yeah, you? no, I hear you. Yeah. I gotta have some money. Nothing wrong with having, no, a, no, nothing no. Wrong with having an instrument or two around. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, that's yeah. it. Now, are you very, uh, you say you're a Christian, uh, Christian. are you uh, very uh, dogmatic? Do you, do you celebrate in any particular uh, faith? Are you, uh, do you believe in ceremony as important for religion? Or is it just, uh, do you do a direct line to God without the... Uh, standing up, sitting down, wear this, do that uh, kind of aspect of it. I think ritual has a role to play. It's nice to stop the chronos or everyday life and have moments of deep meaning. Right. There's no doubt about that. As a need that. to meditation, perhaps, or prayer? Or even just in community. Right. And so forth. So I am a product of Shiloh Baptist Church of Sacramento, California. Right. But at 57 years old, I've learned to be a jazz-like Christian. Okay, so you riff your way through the old thing. That's exactly Yeah, yeah, I get it. You're constantly moving, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because it's not about dogma and doctrine, it's about the love, and all the rest is just sounding brass and tinkling cymbal, brothers. The quality of the love in your soul, and it's the quality of your service to the least of these. The orphan, the widow, the fatherless, the motherless, the poor, the prisoner. 25th chapter, Matthew. How do you do that? How does that manifest itself in your life? Primarily, uh, spending much of my time and energy writing, reading, spending time in prisons, right. high schools, junior highs, and raising the issue of the plight of poor people. It, part of it is just the legacy of Martin King. Now, I decided, right. my brother Tavis Smiley, the same way, we decided that we were going to keep alive the legacy of Martin King and be faithful unto death. And King was basically, like you and I, he was a crack vessel. He was trying to love his crooked neighbor with his crooked heart. Yeah. 
but he did it in such a way with a sense of humility and also he did it in such a way that he kept track of those whose suffering is usually rendered invisible poor people and working people it could be gay brothers lesbian sisters it could be jews arabs muslims working people and so forth think about your own background there in Glasgow. Yeah. That rich tradition of working class people. Yeah, a lot of people in Glasgow. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. at the same time, you know the dignity and you know the integrity. Sure, sure. And most importantly, the humanity. Humanity, but also a great deal of, of uh, of inhumane behavior brought about by dogma associated oh, with true. religion. Oh, I mean, yes. Uh, oh, yes. I think most of the forms of religion have been forms of idolatry, which is to say they've, they've been well adjusted to greed, well adjusted to bigotry, right, and well adjusted to avarice. And the kind of uh, religion that I'm talking about is mal adjusted to greed, concerned about fairness, right. It's mal adjusted to indifference, concerned about compassion, and mal adjusted to fear. Instead, it's courageous and tries to be hopeful, so that it looks the fear in the face and keeps moving. But that's the legacy of Martin. That's what Brother Martin King was all about. Well, I, I'm in. Yeah. All yeah, right. all right, I'll do no, it. No, no, no. It's yeah, too, yeah. It's too, it's too. I wish I had more time to talk to you, Doctor. We've got to go back again. We've got to talk some more. Oh, it's a wonderful yeah. conversation. Dr. Cornell, everyone.